understanding physics. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, paper three, section A, which is the practical paper. Yeah, it's based on practical work and what to expect. Okay. Uh, now, four questions. Yeah, based on practical work. Four big long answer questions, if you like, based on practical work. Um, according to the specification, what do you need to be able to do? Solve problems and apply scientific knowledge based on practical contexts. That's what you do on paper one and paper two. So it wouldn't hurt to get some revision done. Uh, you know, it's just normal paper, really. Scientific knowledge, solving problems. But then there's other things as well, stuff to do with experiments, comment on experimental design, evaluate scientific methods. You know what the word evaluate doesn't means, don't you? It means you compare them and then say which one is better and why. That's to evaluate. Yeah. Present data in appropriate ways, which is tables and graphs. Evaluate results, draw conclusions uh, with reference to measurement uncertainties and errors, very important. Identify variables, uh, so independent, dependent, and ones that you need to control. Uh, plot and interpret graphs, lots of marks to do with graphs, okay? Process and analyze data using appropriate mathematical skills. If you're doing A-level maths, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, consider margins, margins of error, accuracy and precision of data. Uh, know and understand how to use a wide range of experimental and practical instruments, equipments and techniques. OK, you should have done lots of experiments throughout your course. Uh, well, you've definitely done 12 uh, practical assessments, haven't you? OK, so the equipment that you use, those methods in particular, you should be familiar with. Now, um, June 2022, for example, June 2022, AQA. Uh, these were the questions. Question one uh, was measuring the speed of sound in a steel rod. And it was basically all about using an oscilloscope, which is actually dead easy. Using an oscilloscope to measure amplitude and to measure frequency. Uh, question two uh, was about a cantilever, which is like a beam which is supported at one end and you load it at that end and you measure the deflection. Uh, there was parallax error was involved, identifying variables, uh, processing the data, working stuff out, uh, proving a relationship. I think you have to work out Young's modulus from the data. Uh, question three, resistance of a cylinder of putty. It's a classic experiment. Uh, what equipment are you going to use? Estimating uncertainty, combining uncertainties. Hopefully you know how to do that. Uh, lots of marks to do with a graph. Uh, line of best fit, finding the gradient, getting the resistivity from the gradient, uh, knowing how to work out the SI units of something or other. Uh, question four uh, is a PAG isn't it? You should have done Boyle's law by compressing a gas in a syringe, analyzing data, scientific knowledge about Boyle's law, uh, taking measurements from a scale uh, and reading and processing data from a graph. That was June 2022. You look at, obviously, you look at plenty of past papers and get an idea of the kind of questions that come up. What practical skills will I need to demonstrate? This is what the specification says. I'm not going to talk through it. Pause the video. Have a read of that for yourself. Uh, this is a, a summary, if you like, of that. Uh, errors. Can you answer these questions? What's the difference between a random error and a systematic error? Uh, how do you go about reducing random errors and systematic errors? Uh, what is parallax error? Make sure you know what that is. Uh, define the following terms. What does precision mean? Repeatability and reproducibility. What's the difference between those two? Uh, resolution, what does accuracy mean? Uncertainty, again, I've done a whole video about uncertainty. You know, there's absolute, fractional and percentage uncertainty. How do you actually determine the uncertainty from a set of results? 
or from the resolution of the instrument that you're using? Uh, do you know how to represent uncertainty for a particular point, plus or minus whatever, uh, using error bars? Um, how are they combined, absolute and percentage? Loads of marks for graphs, drawing a line of best fit. Make sure you've got a nice sharp pencil and a ruler. Yes, drawing lines of best fit, determining the gradient of a graph. Always be careful with the units. Look at the units, yeah? Here, T squared, the units are seconds squared. Uh, getting the intercept, that might be important, like the internal resistance graph. Uh, determining, the, determining the uncertainty in the gradient. If, if this graph of T squared against L and you're getting a value of G from the gradient, what is going to be the uncertainty in that value of G? You can get that from, if you like, a line of worst fit, one that happens to go through the error bars. I've done videos, as I said, so, you know, this is the playlist on the SI system and uncertainty and accuracy and precision, etc. So uh, if you're not confident, have a look at my videos there on the skills that you need to know and the definitions of the terms that I mentioned earlier. If you're asked to write a method, you may well be asked to write a method. Say what the independent and the dependent and the control variables are. In other words, what are you going to change? What are you going to measure? What are you going to keep the same? Say what equipment you will use and its resolution. I'm going to, to measure the diameter of the wire. I will use a micrometer, which has a resolution of a hundredth of a millimeter. What measurements you will take? Uh, in other words, how many measurements and what range of measurements. So for the length of the string, I will do from 30 centimetres to 100 centimetres at 10 meter, 10 centimetre intervals. Yeah, uh, the interval, the number and the range of measurements. Uh, outline your method. Uh, do it like a, a bullet points. You, I will do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. Uh, say how you will minimize uncertainty, yeah? Try and avoid systematic errors, especially. Uh, don't forget to say that you'll take repeats. Why do we take repeats? Because that means you can work out an average and that minimizes the effect of random errors. Why do we take repeats? To minimize the effect of random errors. There you go, I'm repeating myself. Be especially familiar with the 12 experiments that you did for your PAGs. And I've done a video on each of them. Your practical assessments, that is. As with all exams, uh, at the beginning, spend a few minutes, two or three minutes, read through the whole paper. OK, don't just dive in at question one. Read through the whole paper. How many questions are there? Might not be four, there might be five. OK, how many questions are there? Which ones look easy? You don't have to do them like the first one first and the second one second. You can do the last one first if you want to. Yeah, it will get marked. Uh, how many questions are there? Which ones look easy? Uh, how many marks are there for each of these questions? Very important. Now, why? Because uh, you should spend 70 minutes, that's what it actually says on the front of the paper, on section A. And there's 45 marks, which is about a minute and a half for every mark. Now, looking at the June 22, question 1, 2, 3, 4, that's how many marks there were. And so that's roughly how much time you should spend on each of those questions, roughly. Now, wouldn't it be a shame if you didn't get round to doing question 4, which was actually really, really easy, and there's loads and loads of marks for it. So if you run out of time and you haven't even got to question four, uh, that could make a big difference to what grade you get. So have a quick look through the paper, how many marks are there for each question, and, and don't spend ages organizing what you're going to do because you haven't got time, but it's good to have in the back of your mind basically how many questions, roughly how many marks there are, and be sensible in time management. Time management is very, very important. 